Hey everybody, it's Christine, and today I have got what may just be one of my very favorite layouts ever to share with you. It is going to be a two-page spread, and it is going to be using the Apron Strings collection, which is brand new from Simple Stories. Now, this one will do a great job of telling a family story. It also just has beautiful product. Um, there are so many things I love about this collection. And I love that it forces you to kind of be nostalgic and reflect, reflect on things that your family loves in your family's history. So for mine today, I opted to cut out these recipe cards. And these are available both in the six by eight paper pad, as well as in the back side of some of the patterned paper in the traditional 12 by 12 size. So either whether you get the full collection in 12 by 12 or the six by eight pad, you can get these. Um, and they are six inches wide, as you can see. So right off the bat, I thought, you know, I'm going to tell the story of what my kids favorite meal is that I make. Because number one, we need to reflect on the things that are good in life, right? My kids actually really enjoy my cooking, which I know is a pretty special thing. <laughs> uh, I see the Facebook comments from other moms. And so I wanted to tell that story. But they also all have a different favorite thing. So I wanted to be able to document that. And I'm not going to really go into great depth on the recipes. But I just tell a little bit of detail about it. And it will just help me to be able to remember this period in time, what they loved, um, and help them to remember too. So with it being the six inches wide recipe cards, I knew I was going to have to go with a two-page spread. I opted for this yellow and white striped background. It's a really subtle stripe. And so I thought it would work well um, and be a nice addition versus just straight up cardstock. The next thing I did is I took this six by eight paper pad and it had this paper in it that was rows of like kitchen cabinets, um, kitchen shelves. And so you can see it's got all these different utensils and pots and pans and stuff like that on it. Because it's only six inches wide, there is a split there in the middle of the page. And you'll see in a little bit how I cover that up. But I just really liked that paper. I liked the size of it. I felt that size orientation worked really well with my layout. There's also one in the 12 by 12 cardstock, but it's a smaller print. And I didn't think it was gonna work as well for such a big layout. I needed the bigger, the bigger icons on there. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and add a red strip of washi tape along the bottom. And this is the washi tape that coordinates with this collection. And it's just a great way to bring an extra pop of color to the bottom there and also add a separation between those shelves and the yellow and white striped paper. And you can see as I add it on just how nice it looks, how sharp it really looks and adds to the layout. Now, one thing I did not do as I set out to create this is I did not have a plan in mind. I did not sketch it out. I did not figure out anything. I just kind of pulled out all the product that captured my eye and just kind of put it together as I went. A lot of times lately I've been working based on a sketch or with a real specific plan in mind. And this one took me away from that. So it did take me a little bit longer to complete. And you'll see that some of the elements are a little bit different for me. That said, as I said earlier, I absolutely love how it turned out. So no complaints. Um, I think part of that is because I specifically used the product that I loved. Um, I didn't force anything to fit into a design or an idea. I just was able to pull out the elements that I liked. Now, right now you're seeing I'm cutting up the tag paper, probably my favorite paper in this collection. All different tags, front and back. So the front side is blank tags and the back side is all tags with quotes and icons. So just a fabulous page that you can really stretch for embellishments. You'll also see right now my pictures are cut into circles. That changed, and as you can see, I switched them out to be rectangular. Now, some different things about this time. I did not mat my pictures because matting them added too much up top. What I did do is tuck two tags underneath them, 
and I tried to tuck two tags that had a different color outline than my recipe card. So the one below my son Timmy there is a black outline for the recipe card. So I used red and yellow. And then the other color I'm working in is kind of a teal color. And I really worked with those four colors primarily. So you can see I laid those out and I'm just kind of trying to figure out exactly where I want the tags to lay underneath that picture. My picture is a three by four size picture. Um, and maybe just shy of that a little bit. Now, I wanted my tags to all look the same, which I know is a little nitpicky, but because I've got so much symmetry going already within the layout, I knew they needed to look the same or it was just going to be distracting. So you can see how I made that happen right there, and you'll see it again here in just a moment. I'm taking the tags and I am setting them right on top of one of my other ones so that they're perfectly lined up adding some adhesive, then adding some adhesive to the top one, and then putting my picture on. So I'm getting a perfect duplicate replicate of each of these. And that really <laughs> was satisfying to me. I was, you know, sometimes you stress out about how to get things just right or how they look or whatever. And this approach just worked so simply and smoothly and looked just right and carried on the symmetry that I already had going in the layout. So perfect. Now you can see how gorgeous all those tags are and how they really add a nice pop of color, but they're also simple. They're not an overwhelming embellishment at all. They're just a really nice addition to this. Again, as I said, this April Apron Strings collection, you got to check it out. It's just fantastic. Um, and if you do, and you do something like this, I would really love to see it. Um, if you want to link me up to it in the comments down below, you can also find me on Facebook at Scrapping with Christine and show me there, or you can tag me on Instagram, same name, Scrapping with Christine. I really love seeing when people take an idea that I created and run with it and make it their own. And that's been happening quite a bit lately, but I'm going to just throw it out there again. If you do something with this, I would love to see it. So make sure you tag me. Um, now, carrying on, you can see I'm adding all those on and I'm just putting them just shy of the right hand side of the recipe cards. I'm also using the lines on the striped paper to line them up horizontally, which gotta love that about striped paper. It takes a little bit of the work out of it anyway. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is add my recipes on and begin my embellishing. So my recipes, I'll just share with you and you can catch these up close on Instagram. And if you want more detail, just feel free to send me a message. Um, so my youngest said his favorite is a breakfast sandwich that I make, which we actually just literally had for dinner tonight. Um, I don't actually make it for breakfast because not a morning person. <laughs> um, and then my next oldest, which is next to him on that right hand side, he said his favorite a is a macaroni and cheese that I make in the Instant Pot. Then my daughter said tater tot casserole, which is not your traditional tater tot casserole with like cream of mushroom and stuff. It's a chicken and cheesy one that is, again, a super simple recipe. Um, and then the final one, my oldest said his favorite was this buffalo chicken pasta that I make. So what was fun about this was, first of all, seeing what they had in common on the recipes, which, first of all, they're some of my favorite recipes. Second of all, they're all pretty easy to make. Third, they all have cheese. <laughs> So they are cheese lovers <laughs> and none of them have beef, which I thought was super interesting as well. Um, but it was just, it was really fun. And what was the most fun about making this whole thing was them just being intrigued and checking it out themselves. They probably spent an hour the next day, each of them to all together going and looking at it and just kind of studying the layout they were super intrigued by it and I think they just really loved how it told such a relevant story for our family um my least favorite part was writing out the recipes but I just took my time wrote it the best I could and tried to keep it neat and <laughs> little details like that um but that you know that's part of the process and 
as we've talked about before, some of us love our writing, others of us don't. <laughs> um, so the final step I'm going to really have here is I'm going to do some embellishing. And you can see I've already got the embellishments laid out. Now I did add the let's eat right there on the right hand side in between the recipe cards. That is going to work as my title. I did not have a great spot to add a big bold title. So I had to chill out on my expectations of that and just add that in there. And then I'm going to add some ephemera and stickers, mostly primarily ephemera, to each of these areas. Now, right now I'm adding it over on the left-hand side. Both that and the Let's Eat one cover up that split in between my shelves that I talked about earlier because it's a six inch wide paper, there's a split. And so I was able to cover those up with embellishments that look good. Um, and I'm obviously adding some dimension in. You can see I'm using some 3D foam squares and just varying that as usual. Up top, you can see I've got, in each of them, I've got a utensil. And so I tried to kind of keep this similar as I built it. So one utensil, one bigger kitchen item, so like over on the far right, I've got that big pan, and it's kind of tucking underneath the tags, but still obvious that it's there. And then I also added a heart or two to each one. So each one kind of had a similar feel. Again, keeping that symmetric feeling going that I have really going strong in this, but going away from the symmetric feeling in that these different shapes help to make it not look totally rigid. Um, and so that was a good way to add that in. Between the difference in colors, the different tags, um, and the changes in the embellishments here, as well as the title and down below, um, all those things help to break up the rigidity that you can get if you have too much symmetry, which I know, like, it's a thing. You have to find, like, a good balance in all these different artistic elements, and sometimes that's a challenge. Um, that said, I think I was able to pull it off pretty well with this layout. So there you have it, a very fun, nostalgic, uh, layout that I'm sure will be a favorite of mine and of the kids for years to come um, that really just does a fantastic job of telling our story. Um, this collection also would be great for creating like a recipe book or that kind of thing for a gift for Christmas. So definitely head over to the Simple Stories website. Check out the close-ups of this layout as well as the products in this collection because I really think you guys are going to love it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you aren't a subscriber already and we will see you again next time.